It's almost that time of year again when the weather's turning nice, we can go to the beach. Today is Easter Sunday, but sadly we can't go out because of all the current conditions and nobody can leave their house, but that doesn't deter us from doing what we love, such as eating. And today I'm going to show you how to make a traditional gazpacho. It's something that I learned with my time here in Barcelona, and since we're in Spain, it's a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to make it. Before we get going today, be sure to like the video down below, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. From my time in Barcelona, I've learned to make gazpacho from more than one chef, and everyone tends to have a little variance in the recipes. The traditional recipe calls for tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers, green or red. Green is more traditional, but red enhances the color very good extra virgin olive oil and good vinagre de jarez, which is sherry vinegar. But some of the ingredients that the traditional recipe also calls for, depending on the person, is garlic, onions, and even a bit of bread. Some people use all of this, some people add or one or two, and some people omit all of it. A very flexible recipe that you can add or omit some of the ingredients if you like. I know a lot of people don't want raw garlic in their uh, soup, but it's something that you can do. And if you want to make a different type of soup, you can add strawberries to it, raspberries, and even blueberries to give it a little bit of a difference the next time you make it. For the tomatoes, you're going to use, you want to make sure that they're extremely ripe. You can use basically any tomato that you can get because we have some tomatoes over here that are not very common in the US, like Cogar tomatoes and these tomatoes because these are more for pan con tomate. But you want to use a very ripe tomato and if you want you can also take the skin off by marking the bottom putting them in some boiling water for a few seconds and then putting them in ice water, you can peel the skin. For me, I'm not gonna do this because they're so small. And then you can also take this little pit out. This is a must. You can cut into the tomato and you can just take it out. And we're gonna throw the tomatoes right in and then after this, we're going to peel some of the other veg. Some people leave the skin on, but for me, no. So I'm gonna peel it. After you have it peeled, you can just cut it in pieces. If you want, you can take the seeds out by cutting it in half, taking a mini spoon. Where do I have one? Here. And just by scooping the seeds out, just like this. Okay, for the peppers, I'm gonna take the seeds out. Mm, small, teeny peppers. I'm gonna throw the whole thing in. So after you add all the vegetables to the mixture, you're going to now add the vinegar, and you're also gonna add a bit of oil. And if you want, you can add a little bit of water, not too much, and then you can blend. Okay, put the lid on, and we'll blend it. Okay, now we need to add a little bit of water. It's a little too thick. So while you're blending it, be sure to taste it and have a look at it. If it's a little too thick, add a little bit of water. If it needs a little more salt, add some more salt. And if you want to add more vinegar, add a little more. If you don't know, then try a little bit of each and test. But anyway, it's very easy to do. Also, if you want to leave it, um, well, chunky, you don't, you don't have to pass it. But if you want to pass, you can use a chinois or you can use a sieve of some sort, even a colander that's more of a sieve and you can take out a lot of the seeds and the particles that you don't want and then of course you can easily enjoy the soup whenever you want mm -hmm. 
So guys, I hope you liked the video today. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to write down below and be sure to hit that like button as it helps with the algorithm on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you again soon. Thank you.